everybody. Um, the talk is going to be about two parts. I'm going to first go through some uh, business points and uh, obstacles that we had to solve. And the second part is going to be uh, something that is really not visible to you. And I'm going to be talking about the project that we have been doing for a year now uh, and changing a lot of, of our internal architecture and infrastructure. So, yeah. The ticket that you actually get and when you book is just like you get an email, you get the PDF, and you can enter uh, the boarding and go to the flying, right? But everything behind that is a complex system that is connected uh, through multiple, multiple services, uh, multiple databases, uh, multiple providers, uh, and solving a complex uh, business problem. So uh, to get here, uh, the company was founded in uh, 2012 by two guys that actually wanted to travel cheaper. That, that was the whole idea. I want to get somewhere the cheapest that I can. So they were trying to find tickets online and combining them, etc. But they said themselves like, hey guys, uh, there has to be a better idea, right? So they started developing uh, Kiwi.com as you know it now. Uh, at the beginning, there was like only a one small database. All the computations were done uh, on the database uh, live during that. And actually, the booking part at the beginning was done manually, completely. But we are solving similar problem for the end user as Google is, right? You have like one input box. Uh, we have more because we need destination and days, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the, the same behavior that is behind the search on Google is also behind us. The complexity of the system behind that is much bigger, and we are trying to solve similar problem for the end user. Make his life easy. It's the same approach that, for example, Amazon did with their patented one-click buy button. That the patent ended like 2017 or something like that. And for example, also Netflix, like. Simple user interface, click, and you are watching a movie. So how this simple idea went live? So let's get the flight data, right? It must be easy. So you, you, you just start getting them, and uh, then it, you need to do some uh, combinations on that. Because you are working on different routes, you are trying to find the best possible way how to get there uh, to the destination. And it's not necessarily the thing that you're going to find between, uh, like in, within, one airline, uh, within one alliance. So we are doing virtual interlining. And that means we are combining alliances that don't cooperate between each other. Then we serve the route to the user. And he picks one, right? Uh, then he books a flight. Ta-da, and he can go there. Actually not. So for getting the data for us, it is a complex problem because our partners don't do it unifiedly. We have partners that are, that are uploading uh, data to us through FTP. We have the, the live data, database connections. We have several that have API endpoints. Some of them are pushing those data to S3 or cloud storage. So only on this part, you see, it just becomes to really diversify. And you can, if you imagine how many airlines you have and how many partners we have, then the, the problem only on this part becomes really big. So you're combining the data. This is, a, this is a, uh, statistics from today. How many flights, number of flights within that day. So within one day, uh, there is an, like an average of 180K or something like that, or that, that is flying every, every single day. So imagine that you're trying to pick flights from that. And you're combining flights towards future. So the, the problem becomes really huge. Like the combination, uh, combi the, the amount of combination that we are doing is really big. To understand that better, so every single day and every minute there is a purchase for the flight tickets, and that means that we exchange 60% of data every day within all our databases, meaning that where we where we store the flights. Okay, we exchange 80%. Uh, every three days and uh, every 10 days, the whole database is like, like uh, changed. 
So the, the velocity of the data that is there is, is really big. So for booking, you will tell yourself like, yeah, that must be easy. You can do it by PayPal, uh, PayPal or just enter credit card, something like that. But actually the, the, the problem is much bigger. On that amount of bookings that we are doing, we have to do fraud detection because there is often somebody trying to pay with your stolen credit card. We have to be PCI compliant because we are working with the credit cards. Then you have business problems, like you have different rates for, uh, for different routes uh, uh, within countries. So you have to find the optimi uh, optimal uh, currency, how you're gonna buy it. Then you have schedule changes, for example, that you buy a flight for somebody and that the airline changes the flight because it's delayed or like they reschedule it to three hours later or something like that. And you have to, you have to give the person information about it and maybe you will cancel the booking and book something else. And also currency problems, right? They are going up and down, up and down and you can lose or, win or, or gain money. So now I'm gonna be talking about that innovation part that I wanted to say about the change that we have been doing uh, for, for some time. So quickly, um, we have been using at MySQL at the beginning, then we had like a cluster of 63 uh, Postgres service, servers and a lot of Redis cache be before that. And uh, the last one was, we had a huge Cassandra cluster con containing 100 nodes and where we are storing all the, all the flights information. So this is how it looked like. Complex, uh, through multiple providers, uh, really we, we had problems between like connectivity between those providers. It was AWS, Google Cloud and Hetzner and, and we had to solve it. And we started to think, okay, so we're not gonna just like wait until something breaks, but we need to innovate here and we need to change it significantly. So we started running two POCs parallelly. Uh, that wasn't a smart idea. Uh, but we were considering changing the cloud provider and not only changing from AWS uh, going to GCP, but also migrating a lot of bare metal services to GCP. And the second one was exchange of the storage for those flights. We had those that cluster of Cassandra 100 nodes, but it was not sufficient. It was hard to extend by the nature of Cassandra. It is really not good maintainable. So we draw something like this. It looks much better. It is organized, ta -da -da. And we migrated a lot of stuff from bare metal to GCP. And we were happy, like the idea was here and we need to start working on it, testing it. Is it doable? So we were speaking about the size of the, the migrated infrastructure uh, that was around 10,000 cores, uh, 100 uh, terabytes of RAM and like 90, tera 90 terabytes of NVMe drives. That storage was one of the crucial part for that because uh, you can have more CPUs, you can have more RAM. That's not an issue in cloud, right? You just click, you pay more, ta -da, ta -da, problem solved. But the NVMe drives are crucial because you get different performance. You get different IOPS, you get different throughputs on writes, reads, and also like lifetime. So uh, we combined like three teams. So uh, we partnered with SteelaDB and uh, with Google on this project. And we started working and testing everything with them. So what was the, what was the idea? So what we were looking at was like how big the, the Stila DB cluster needs to be because we gave information to the Stila team that they saw our Cassandra cluster and they said like, yeah, that is not a problem. Uh, that can run on nine servers instead of, if, instead of 100. For those of you who don't know, uh, Stila DB is basically rewritten uh, Cassandra because Cassandra was, is written in Java. Who does that? Uh, and and still ADB is much more performance oriented. So that's why it can drop significantly on the amount of servers that you, that you will need. And also you get much more uh, of the performance, even though reducing still. 
So they told us nine servers, and we were like, yeah, we don't trust you, but let's test it. The second one was where. So what infrastructure is going to be behind it? Is it going to be AWS, GCP, or is it going to be some bare metal provider? So we basically started testing it in multiple, multiple areas. <coughs> and the second one uh, was like GCP. So what's going to be the cost at the end of the day? Uh, how are we going to be affected by noisy neighbors? How are we going to be affected by the fact that you have different CPU families uh, on a cloud provider? Uh, at that time, you couldn't pick which one exactly do you want. Now they changed it a bit. Uh, and for example, differences between locations and regions. So you have like different, basically different configuration. Where we are aiming at, was running Stila DB within one region, within three locations. So it would be really a deployment that would be much more stable to what we had with the Cassandra at Hetzner. Uh, and definitely we were testing like every possible deployment for the storage. So it was the local SSD drives, the uh, network storage, uh, the NVMe drives that they provide. Uh, and we ran into like, like really hundreds of tests that we run and uh, look at those numbers. We did the same for the CPUs. So we knew exactly how our application is going to behave on GCP. So we knew what is going to be the coefficient for going there. So that means like, is it going to be cheaper or how much we need to overscale the, in the, uh, the instance uh, to get there. And this was really important to get those information for basically the whole negotiation of the contract, because yes, within each contract you get some discount, right? And you have to work around that. So this project was really big, not only from the infrastructure perspective, but also from the business side, because we were already like spending a lot of our time on it. Okay, so we started in March, 2018. Uh, I, know I said it on, also here on PyCon, that we are considering moving from Cassandra to CLADB. Uh, and the PLCs basically ended up in, ended, uh, in September 2019. Uh, we got all the hardware needed for the deployment in December 2018. So it was not anymore those nine servers. It was actually 21 servers, and the last delivery that we had was during CLADB Summit. We were there for some talks, and, and uh, in the morning when the, when the whole summit started, we just received uh, emails about the delivery, so guys didn't know what to do, so they just plugged it in and started traf sending some write traffic to, to the cluster during the conference. Uh, and there was one important thing that we needed and we said, like, we're not going to go this route anymore. And that was direct connection between, between OVH as our partner for bare metal deployment of Scylla uh, and uh, GCP. So at that point, it was clear for us that we going GCP and we're going to have Scylla DB running in OVH on bare metal. And we wanted the secure connectivity. So the SteelaDB cluster size went from nine servers during the beginning of the POC to 21 servers during like some period of testing around the November, December -ish time. Um, in January, we figured out, hey, we might need more. So we ordered to, we went up to 36. Uh, and now uh, we have also some backup for that. Why this is happening? This is happening because we are pushing more and more content and more and more combination of flights uh, to our databases and, to, and, and, and we give you more of the possibilities. So the bigger we database we have, the more options and the better routes we can at the end serve you. So this is not only because like the, or it is not only because of organic growth, but also because we are adding all, all day, uh, every day new content. So it is buses, trains, it's going to be hotels, it's going to be, uh, I don't know, Uber, it's going to be uh, helicopters or whatever, right? So when we add this, we also need to increase the capacity on, on, on that part. So this is how it looks like. Uh, so the, 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 connect, the GCP uh, API endpoint 
that you basically hit when you search for anything uh, goes to some local deployment of the Kubernetes cluster and some application is running there with the, with the business logic. And then it sends out some requests to our database, the Stila DB deployment. Uh, and why there are those three bugs? So it is running in Rube, Strasbourg, and Frankfurt. So we went completely regional with the deployment, and we have like dedicated networking within OVH for this cluster, and also dedicated networking between GCP and OVH. And this is something that we, we really think that is rock solid, because we have also like backup plan, if those lines would be down, then we go through public internet, but through secure tunnels. So we really believe that this, this uh, Oh, the, the setup that we have right now is much better than we had uh, before with Cassandra. So, how do you do that? Like I said many times, right? It is the database that holds every flight that we basically sell. So, every system has to be uh, compatible with two implementations. So, one was the Stila DB and one was the Cassandra. But we didn't only like change Cassandra and Scylla DB. What we did, we also changed the structure of the data within, uh, within uh, Scylla DB. We did that because uh, Scylla DB guys told us to do, because it was um, like, it's gonna be more efficient uh, uh, on the speed size, also on the volume size. And also we wanted to change some uh, logic uh, of our analysis that we are doing on those data. And basically, uh, another part for that testing period, like when you go and you have to run two systems parallel, you're not gonna run the whole infrastructure two times, right? Because that's gonna be like, our CFO would just throw us out of the window. So we had to figure out like how we gonna do that. So on GKE, uh, we basically had several pods within the cluster uh, that were just proxies for another deployment within the same cluster and the, the new deployment had the, the new features and was able to connect to, to Stila DB uh, in OVH. And we also changed the structure of the IDs. So a flight had an ID before and now it's a, like some computation. And during that, every system had to understand which ID he is getting. Like, yes, you can imagine those ifs all within all those systems, but that was uh, needed. And one more thing. There is, an, there is some applications around Stila DB, and we basically understood that Python is not that performant for this task. We didn't want to write it in C++, so we went Go, and during that whole period of the POC, there was an, a team working on uh, rewriting those API endpoints from Python to Go. So, summing it up, you can imagine how many changes we did. Cassandra, structure of the data, uh, IDs, uh, rewriting uh, to Go, changing the infrastructure provider, uh, deciding that it's gonna run on, uh, on GCP, that means uh, new problems with Kubernetes because we didn't we we were not running on Kubernetes before, so everything this combined to this within this big project and there were a lot of people through the company working on it. It was not like one or two guys, but every single team that has something to do with that uh, had to help on, on this project. So coming back to this, so this is something that like you seamlessly see it running, you don't. You can anticipate how big the, the system behind it can be, but you never know unless you are within that company and this also applies to us. So for example, now during the talk, well, I, I calculated it for a 30 minutes talk, but we had to short it out, so this is wrong number, but we sold like 750 seats and you can, you can watch them on the screen uh, uh, outside. Um, every day we do like 100 million searches uh, and on average. And we are copying the standards of day to night traffic because we, we are not having like uh, the same kind of traffic from US or Europe going to our systems. And we are right now 
2016 plus skivvies uh, within company, and that grew from those two guys in from 2012. So thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Are you ready to take questions? Awesome. So, how do you handle why do you handle credit card data yourself instead of using Stripe or similar? So the, the problem of that is uh, it's much bigger. So Stripe is only one provider, but you have also aggregators on aggregators on aggregators on aggregators. So imagine it like PayPal and Stripe being aggregated by XYZ. I don't know the names of those companies. Sorry, we have some better experts. Dimitri, can you? <laughs> So uh, that, that, that knows those companies, uh, uh, and also banks. Like you don't, you don't go to every single bank, uh, but you go to an aggregator. So it is not long, only like we would be handling the data of the credit cards, but also the system is much, much more complex than, than, uh, than just one provider. And for example, you have different providers in Russia uh, because it is beneficial running there through those. And if you have like several aggregators this kind, then you also get like better, uh, better fees and everything, like better ratios, etc. The next one. Did you create uh, separate teams for running the, uh, the proof of, proofs of concept and executing experiments? If so, what was the size of those? Uh, so at the beginning, it was like, uh, so yes, at the beginning, we, we were working in a really small group. And that was six people at the beginning. So the phase when we were testing it, um, basically this was team. This was the team that is doing infrastructure. Uh, another guy that was doing much more, much more of cloud deployments. Another guy that is expert for the databases and C++. And another guy that was basically developer within his team. So the, the group was really small at the beginning. What is the most expensive operation you run on the system? This is the most expensive operation you run on the system. Uh, <coughs> I'm calculating. <laughs> uh, it would be the API endpoint uh, running in Google Cloud, uh, following really head to head with the Stila DB deployment. Do you think Go might eventually re completely replace Python and Kiwi? I can't answer that on PyCon. <laughs> <laughs> there is your no, answer. No, 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 no. <laughs> so honestly, I believe that both have their their, their place. So there is nothing like uh, uh, you would be stupid to do Go for some application and other other ways, right? So because of the performance, for example, that you can get from Go. So it's, I, I still believe that they have both places and they will not, that, that's, that's not going to happen. For example, I can't imagine Go replacing Python uh, on the analytical side because the whole ecosystem is being built around Python, right? Uh, so, or Scala. Uh, didn't you feel like your website wouldn't be used since similar, similar ones exist? Uh, no. Uh, so the idea at the beginning, like really, the, the, the point is that we are creating unique content. So this is something that we are providing to other providers too. So this is not something like just you, you, we, ha we are serving those routes. We are combining something and proposing you routes that uh, no other guys are doing. So if you are using, I don't know, Pelican, they don't have that much of a unique content. On top of that, you have websites that only do aggregation, but we also have whole customer service support. We have 11 sites around the globe uh, only for customer support. So this is like the, 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 our added value on this is much bigger. Also, there is something you might be familiar like Kiwicom guarantee and that's, that's something that actually we will get you there. If something breaks on your route because it is combined by multiple providers, we will get you there. So we call our support uh, if you have a problem and we, we will figure out the way uh, how to solve it. So maybe you will be tra traveling by train at the end or we will. There was one example, for example, a guy missed his flight uh, from Brno and the second flight was only possible to go from Prague. But we wouldn't make it 
and there was one guy driving from Brno to Prague for the difference office of somebody took him to, to took that customer drove him to the airport to Prague uh, and he successfully got there well that's some customer service right there and uh, how many how many uh, of your customers do you need to go through this so for out of out of uh, the total of customers how what, what per percentage of, of uh, them encounter issues sorry I don't have the number okay I don't know any guess? If, I, if I might know, I might not be able to tell you. So. <laughs> All right. Um, why did you change from Python to Go in CLDB? Why did you change from Python to Go in CLDB? Uh, for example, because of uh, driver support. Because the, the Python for, uh, for Stila is shitty. So the same applies, for example, like Python driver for Kafka. Uh, it is not that good as the one on written in Scala. Uh, so, and this applies like, like the maintainers uh, invest much more time into, into that. But this, that was not the main reason. Like we knew by the nature of what it is done within the application that the application is gonna run better in Go, or faster. Mm -hmm. And the final one, are you going to have offices in Slovakia? We have. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you so much, Martin.